So my local fish store last Sunday invited me over to film a presentation by Uwasa, who came to show us all of their products. Uh, the video that resulted was quite long, and I'm afraid the audio quality isn't the best. I did film it with external mics, and uh, I tried to filter it out the best I can, but it, it isn't great. And because it's really long, and you might have specific things that you're curious about, I went ahead and made a time code. So you can see uh, all the different things that they talk about. It is quite a long presentation, and I've trimmed out questions and a lot of peanut gallery comments for the most part, and left it straight to uh, the representatives discussing uh, their products. It was quite interesting to me, uh, if you're into pond stuff, there's a lot of uh, pond filtration things I didn't know about that I thought were pretty neat. They also have some really interesting canister filters that I'm really curious about. I'd say the products I'm most curious about would be uh, starting from the very end, you know, maybe the BioWarp Air. Uh, I really love the, the little box filters that they had that fit inside of aquariums. I actually wouldn't mind swapping out one of my canisters for one of these canisters because they're really interesting. If you see a product in here that you wish I would try out, be sure to leave a comment down below and uh, maybe we'll see about making that happen. But without further ado, Owasa. So, um, since the reintroduction of Owasa back in the States in 2014, we've been going after uh, bait in acquisition mode. So, uh, we bought an Italian pump company, Eden. Then there was another company, uh, Reef One, which I came from, which is a Bio brand. And then recently we just acquired Atlantic Water Guard. It's another really, really great um, water garden company that does like really cool basins, um, waterless or pondless features, things like that too. So, um, so it's really good all around, fully all in one place for every type of product you need now. So whether it's indoor aquatics, water garden, if you really want to go on the elaborate side, we can help you too on the fountain side too. We do, you know, rain curtains or those digital wall displays where the water really drips and you can have text come across too as it's falling. So um, with that I will get into oh. I'll come around next. <laughs> I'll, I'll be sure it'll be a lot this way. So this is kind of what I talked about. Um the company's founded Irwasa in 1949. Um, and since then it's gone through a lot of different changes, expansions, and acquisitions. Um, and really what's not on there now is the acquisition of Atlantic Water Gardens, which was last year. So there's been a lot of changes and whatnot, so all good. I don't know if you can see that or not, but yeah, we are basically global. We have offices over in Europe, and uh, really we have manufacturing facilities everywhere too, so we are, we can say we are the global leader in a lot of our categories. The water, so right now we're going to get into the water garden slash pond side. Um, anything in our water guard or our pond side, I know of our water pumps, we include what's called an earth grounding plate. What that is, is a basically, it could be as small as our little fountain pumps or as big as some of our big like, filter pumps. So even on this little guy here, this little fountain pump, there's a little metal plate in the back. What that plate does, it's an added bit of security. So um, let's say there, you, you know, put that, it's gonna be submerged with water. There's any bit of extra electricity, whether not coming from our equipment, but let's say from other manufacturers like lights or pumps or whatever, there's any straight voltage in the water, what's gonna happen is it's going to be, it's gonna find the path of least resistance, which is that little metal plate. It'll take it out into that and hopefully through an impro a properly installed GFCI, it'll trip the breaker. So that's way you can literally, you know, you have one of our pumps in that body of water and you can take a live 120, even 240, 40 volt, zap it in there, it'll find that plate get it out of the water pop as fast as possible and trip that breaker, the safety feature. So we're the only manufacturer who has that. It's something by code we don't have to do, but it's something that we want to do, uh, just to kind of give us a little leg up in the, in the market. So anything, you know, we've had instances where our floating fountains, people have used those by their docks or their piers, and they've had a short on their electric pier, or their, their, their uh, boat lift. And because we've had our floating fountain somewhere nearby, that straight voltage is automatically going to go to that and get that electricity out of the water. So if you have kids swimming or you have people in that, you know, whether it's a pond or a fountain or whatever, there's any straight voltage is going to take care of that so you're not worried about the exact. So kind of a cool little feature. Again, nothing that we have to do, something that we want to do. It's an actual benefit to our products. Now, is that true with all of your, your tank pumps as well? No. Okay. 
because they're they are grounded as well too. But this would be a lot more voltage, you know, some of these uh, bigger units. But yeah, only on the water guard or pond features. Pond products. Um, another added feature or benefit to our pond products is the EFC. It's called environmental function control. A lot of big words, but it's really easy. These pumps are smart. They know when if it's plugged in and you take it out, it's going to freewheel, meaning the impeller is just going to go free. It's going to have no resistance. It's going to smart enough to turn itself off. Same goes if this is at the bottom of your pond or feature. Let's say a branch falls down or somehow another it gets obstructed, the suction gets obstructed, and it can't draw any more water, it knows to turn itself off. So you're not gonna burn out pumps. It's really simple to reset it, you unplug it, you plug it back in, and it's smart enough to realize, okay, the obstruction or the you know clog or jams have been cleared, let's regular get back to operating now. So they're smart enough to know if they're obstructed on the discharge or on the intake too, to turn themselves off so they don't burn, your, burn out, and you're not have to buy a new pump or whatever. So. If you look around, at least in some of the packaging, there's a color palette, let's say. A lot of grays, blacks, but you know one color that kind of sticks out, it's the blue. That's our loss of blue, and blue means action. If it's not blue, don't touch it. It makes it really easy for customer service, it makes it easy on the end user. So you know if there's something blue, that means yes, there's interaction for you to clean it or open it or whatever. If it's not blue, hands off. So there's no, you know, for store level, for you know, end users, it just alleviates any guesswork or, oops, I shouldn't have done that. I broke something I shouldn't have screwed around with. I should have called customer service or called the company really easy. So that's why there's that same blue in all of our products, whether it's water garden, indoor aquatics, anything. If it's blue, feel free. Otherwise, call somebody or don't, don't, don't touch it. All right, on our pond program or our pond products, we have what's called a clear water guarantee. And on our catalog, um, page 49, we have a, it's called a clear water guarantee. We're the one of few companies that actually offer this. We give you basically the roadmap to three feet of clear water. By how we do that, we say, okay, you have a pond or a water feature, you tell us a gallonage, you tell us how many fish, whether no fish, medium fish load, or like way too many fish. And we'll say, okay, we recommend filter A, pump B, UVC3, or C, whatever. And we can guarantee you pull out tape measure three feet, dunk it down, and you have crystal clear water up to three feet. Usually it's even more than that, too. So we give the roadmap to be successful, and this works out really well for rehabs. So um, whether you have a water features that have been out there with other brands, um, you know, usually the number one concern is like, oh, my water's green. It's dirty, I got allergy, I got you know, X, Y, Z. And that's where we come in and we say, okay, you're, you have a 9,000 gallon pond, you have a medium fish load, here's what we recommend. You know, This pump, this filter with this UV, give it a couple days and it's gonna be beautiful. And if not, you call us and we'll start to find a situation, whether it takes us to come out there to physically see maybe something's going on that we don't know about, or the insulation was wrong, whatever. We will do everything in our power to make sure we get you that three feet of clear water. So it's a nice little safety blanket. So you use our products. It's only three products: pump, filter, and UV. You're gonna be, be uh, sparkling. So in this slide, um, we have what we call the Owasa Way for our ponds. It's a little bit different than a lot of other manufacturers, where there's a skimmer that has a pump in it and has to run out to a waterfall or such. What we do. Um, or it seems that they'll have like a bottom suction with you know, PVC and pull for the liner, which is kind of you know, a problem we may have. What we do is we put our OptiMax pumps, or our filter pumps, down at the bottom. We want all of the particulate, the fish waste, the fish food, whatever, to come to us. That's where one of these guys come to play. These are meant to literally be thrown in the bottom of the pond, or water feature, and they are grinder pumps, disposal pumps. They want all that stuff to come to it and get that stuff out to the filter. Let the filter do its job too. So you don't have to worry about a skimmer. You can still run a skimmer box if you already have one or if you want that top you know, surface skimming, we do have products for that too. But our way is basically bottom suction out to the filter versus having you know, a top drain or a skimmer box that you're getting that maybe one foot of water being pulled out. You still have the bottom 
that's just kind of stagnant. And that's where you get into a lot of issues, the, the green water, the uh, algae issues, here's the other way. Nothing against these companies, but this is what they do. You know, they leave a lot of un, unmoved water at the bottom. Then sometimes they have to put you know, some type of manifold down there, just like stir up the water to get it out. By us, we have the water coming most of the very bottom of the water feature. Let it come up with gravity. So yeah, in that situation, people are trying to you know, retrofit some type of, like set of manifold, pump just to stir up that part of the body so they can get it out hopefully to the scanner. So like I said, let these, let these, let our equipment do the work for you. Um, we're gonna start getting some of the products. I don't have any of these here, but it's kind of a cool little crossover between water garden to our fob technology side. We have a three products on our water entertainment category. They are literally plug and play and more for theatrics. First and foremost, we have it's called a trio. It is a, it says three, trio. Um, little nozzles, they have lights, and you can, they're meant for, you can put in a pond along this, you know, clear, um, or as a you know, clean water type basin or a pondless basin. What they are, it's got nine programmable settings, and you have your own little fountain. In your yard, so you get the action. It'll, it'll take like little spitters. It'll pop, throw lights, and there's different nine different settings. So you can do you know steady streams or very or just pop, 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 pop. So it's kind of cool. It's if you want that uh, theatrics in your backyard, in your front yard, or wherever. Um, it's all one kit. It comes together with little key fobs. You need you know, 100 feet away, turn it on, and uh, shots away. On the flip side, we have the quintet. You go from three nozzles to five. So you get five. And they can be around little gimbals, so you can either put them straight up or kick them out, it depends on how big the base you have. So you can really shoot these things any way which you want. So it's kind of neat. And then this is one of our better ones called the <clears throat> Lightning. It is a laminar flow type nozzle. So if you go into like Disney, where you see some of the let's say water parks, they have those kind of like jumping jets, where it's a solid stream of water being shot from one point to another. It's, it's a crystal clear. There's no break in the water the whole way. That's what these are. Uh, they are lit, so they can do the RGB, the color changing. So as long as you have, you know, for demos, I usually put like a kiddie pool, put these in them and fire them at each other. And you have that solid, crystal clear water that's silent. You know, shoot from one end to another end. So again, it's just theatrics. So if you have a nice, you know, water feature, you want to throw one of these in. I've got people that have crystal clear ponds and then they'll put those off to the side just to kind of give some, some movement for some actual show. Again, all one kit, one box, super easy to put together. What's the most popular of those? I'll say the Quintet and the Lightning. And then we'll start getting into some of our waterfall and pond pumps. <laughs> um, you've seen pumps, they're all the same, essentially. Um, why ours are a little bit different? Again, it has that grounding plate. They are sized specifically to that, that pump. So this one's about, you know, like a half dollar. For our bigger ones, it's a whole sheet on the back of the pump. Um, one of the other features is, you know, it's a water flow control. They come with all the different little nozzles for the end. Cool little thing that most people don't think about is a plug end. These are fountain pumps. Most fountains are concrete or some type of hard surface. And the cord chases are very, very tiny. So you see the plug end on this one, is as tiny as we can get compared to the plug in on something else, it's like half the size. So you can get it through a cord chase a lot easier. But little things like that you don't think about. So 16 to 20 foot cord, suction uh, cups on the bottom, very easy to clean. I mean, just super easy, efficient. These are the ones that you will really put in place and forget about for 10 years. So you have this beautiful feature and you're, you're kind of hindered by the actual equipment that's in there. So you do a lot of replacement something you're going to be you're going to buy a beautiful feature a beautiful fountain whatever and why not have something quality in there that's going to run this thing you're not going to have issues with so we do it hence a lot of replacement work hence why that cord chain that cord that cord end is super tiny because we don't know the cord chases on these things so we made it as tiny as possible to make sure installation is going to be a breeze for you guys so and then um we go to our pot and say more fountain more pumps as well too um these, the Neptune and Profinot, these are more like clear water fountain pumps. So, I should have one here, I could probably. Um, they are more for filtered uh, 
or you know, you're not going to put fish in these things. There's going to be, you know, you see in front of like hotel lobbies or entrances. Um, these are clear water pumps, so the intake screens are a lot tighter. They don't want any particulate being jammed up in these. Um, yeah. These are workhorse. So these are not your everyday, you know, little fountain pump with a nozzle. These are meant to be put in place and used 24 hours a day for the life of these pumps. So these are sweet and soft and like that. Correct. And um, I should have brought the, we have one nozzle. If you see in one picture on the, that's on your left, looks like a champagne bottle up the top. It's called a frothy nozzle. That is our number one selling nozzle. It looks like you literally popped a champagne bottle in it, that foamy, frothy, solid stream of air bubbles or whatever. You hook that up to the Neptune, which is the smaller pump up there, and it has a very nice audible calming, like, but it, uh, in person, the seat is very, it's just, I don't know, very relaxing, and it looks very modern, high-end, you know. This is, this is the nozzle you see a lot out there. Uh, but usually, you put you team it up with that smaller Neptune on the side, and we really drop it in and go. You, you actually raise the height of those things and how much air, and how loud you want it to be. So, uh, again, these all have the grounding plates. These are frost proof. Another thing about some of these higher end fountain pumps that we have and um, our filter pumps, they have uh, thermal protection where they can be frozen up to negative four degrees. So, especially on our pond pumps, yes, they're in the bottom of our pond. We don't want you to have to take it out every season. So you can literally leave it in there. You can unplug it or run it up to you. But this thing be frozen a solid block of ice. Come springtime, plug it back in, you're fine. There are seals built in all around the pump for that expansion and contraction. So like if you think it's frozen, it's gonna crush it or try to pull it apart. There is factor, there, there are fail safes in there to allow that, that pressure to be relieved or to be smashed on this thing. So we don't want you to have to get in there every year to pull it out, just leave it alone. Make sure it's, you know, there's no debris on top of it. Unplug it, and then come springtime, plug it back in. You should be ready to go. But yeah, we're, we're gonna be a couple dollars more. We're gonna be a little bit more expensive. But we have enough benefits and features that offset those added costs. So, I mean, we're not gonna be the cheapest brand out there. We are your premium band brand. So, uh, but we are price competitive in the market. So, you know, there are your good, better, best out there. Um, but yeah, we are, we're not gonna be your entry level brand, we're gonna be your hopefully final brand. You put this in, you're gonna forget about it basically. Filtration pumps. That's one of these jobbers here. Our filtration pumps are called the Aquamax pumps. Um, they are solids handling pumps, meaning, as I mentioned, like they're grinder pumps. They are your garbage disposals. We want the product or we want your dirty junk coming into this thing. Um, there's an Aquamax Classic and the Premium. This is the Premium. The only difference between the two is the Premium has a secondary suction. So if you have a very long pond or a very long water feature, when you want to have, let's say, a satellite, you know, an extra uh, suction or a surface skimmer, that's where you would plug into this. Otherwise, everything's going to come in through the top. And this goes up to 3 8 inch material, so you have rocks, sticks, leaves. As long as you pass through, it's going to not hurt the impeller. It's going to get it out to the filter and let the filter do its work. And again, you'll see blue means action. For cleaning, keep the screen right off. Again, everything that can pass through here will work just fine, whether it's sticks, rocks, whatever. And this is the workhorse right there. And on the bottom, blue again. So if you do have your secondary suction hooked up, you can actually throttle how much is actually pulling from there. So let's say you have a another surface skimmer or a satellite skimmer, pulling off this, you can have 50% of it being drawn from that down to 10%. You're still going to have your main suction through the top screen, but you can really choke how much you want coming from that satellite, um, that secondary suction. Again, these are meant to just be you know, put in, forgotten about, unless for some reason you, know, you have a catastrophic event where a branch falls in or whatever. These are meant to be left alone, and yeah, you will see them. But after a while, they kind of get that sludge on them and they kind of blend into the bottom. We talked about Aquamax Classic, anywhere from 1,200 to 3,600 gallons an hour. Um, one suction, which is through the top. They do come with a whole boatload of 
fittings, where there's a, that step fitting they show up there. We do have blue-in fittings. They're actually, a lot of the contractors use this one in particular. It's a glue fitting. Half, an inch and a half on the inside, two inch on the outside. And it could be screwed out as simple as that. So um, usually that's the one fitting that everyone uses. Unless you're gonna run you know, actual corrugated, they're gonna run solid pipe, that's a fitting that everyone Then Aquamax uh, Premium, which is that one here, from 2,000 to 4,000 gallons an hour. Um, again, it has that secondary suction if you have a long, long water feature. Very easy. You can just plug and play. Forget about it. And we do have in-pond filtration. This is for something if you have like a blow molded type drop-in pond, or you have some type of little water feature that's you know anywhere from 700 to 1,200 gallons. Called our filtrols. Super easy. Um, comes with nozzles. This is really meant to be drop in. It's got a UV built in. It's got the biological material already in there as well too. The pump. This is a you know you have a water feature. You don't want to worry about doing an external filter or a pump like that. This is you really drop in, and you're going to get the, the little the aesthetics of the feet of the uh, nozzles, and then you're going to get actually proper filtration too. So. Cool little feature. Um, there's a 700 version, which is about to 700 gallons, or the 1200 version up to 1200 gallons. Um, very you know, cost effective way of filtering your current body of water. Pressure filters. This is our bread and butter. Pressure filters are meant, so we have you know, in pond, which I just showed you. We have pressure filters, we have flow through. Um, pressure filters, a little bit easier to install. Not saying our float fees aren't, but this is one of them. We've got two different kinds. We have a bio press, and we have our filter clear. Both come with UVs built in. This is part of our clear water guarantee. Our bio presses and our filter clears for our pressure filters. They're meant to be buried up to this little trim line here, so you can hide them. You can either bury them up to here, put a bush or whatever rocks around them. As long as you have access to this point, you're fine. Pressure filters are meant to, if you want to have a situation where you have your, your Aquamax in the pond, you run the in on this, then this the outlet, the filter water can go uphill to your water, you know, your discharge where you have a, water, like a spillway or a weir, or you can just dump it right back in. These are meant to, if you need to go uphill. Where our flow throughs, this has to be at the highest point. There's no, you know, otherwise it's gonna flood. You got this, it has to be the highest point to have a discharge out from the bottom. But, we consider these our suit and tie filters because the nice thing about our pressure filters is I'm not going to take it apart because it's going to take a lot of time. But what they're meant to do is you'll notice that, let's say on the discharge, whether it's a uh, weir or a nice water waterfall, let's say the water flow is starting to degrade a little, gets less and less and less. That means there's, there's sponges in there, sponges getting a little dirty. Real simple. I'll show you how to do this. Where there's a, this is under normal operation. There's a blue and action for uh, for the discharge. For terms, terms uh, time for cleaning mode. You're going to turn it to the side. It's going to turn the discharge off, and it's going to basically circulate water on the inside. And on the blue handle, yeah, this is going to be very low. You're going to pull up on this handle four or five times just to basically squeeze the sponges that are in there. You're going to get the uh, particulate from the inside out, and kind of just make a really disgusting slurry. On the back side, this is the discharge. When you're all done, you turn this back on. You're pulling water from the pond through here and out to the discharge. So what's coming out of there is going to be disgusting. But it's good. Very nutrient-rich water that you could use for your plants. Um, or dump it in your neighbor's yard, whatever. I don't care. But, and then when it's all water's running clear, click it back to normal operation, and you're back in business. So you can be done in five, ten minutes. So you come home from work and you're like, oh, I don't know, you see your pond's looking like garbage. Oh, I don't want to deal with this. They put it on the cleaning section, a couple rips, let it discharge, put it back to normal operation, and you're back in business. Flows, flows uh, reestablished, and you're done. Real simple. It's got that UV in there. Think about what size the UV is spec to um, the gallonage that they can handle. This is a 4,000 gallon uh, pressure filter right there. Go up to 8,000 gallons on our pressure filters. So, I've seen, we'll tell you, this, so you have like a 
12,000 or 15,000 gallon pot. Some people will run a couple of those in line, or not in line, but like they'll run two of those, or sometimes three of those, because I like to be able to hide them, where you can have three of those or one of these big guys. A little bit harder to hide, but premier, premier filtration. So, come with the same blue fitting? Yes. We just talked about our filtrals, our impond, our pressure filters. Same idea, it's all part of our clear water guarantee. Um, they're smaller units compared to the ones like this. Uh, BioSmarts are like half the size of that. They're very, very easy. I shouldn't say easy, but they are your entry to gravity filters. Up to 10,000 gallons an hour. We're up to get them, like 10,000 gallon ponds. Um, just super, super easy. But like, well, if you're gonna go to BioSmart, I'd rather you go toward the biotechs. These are <laughs> your end all be all. If you have the boom, the pull with it, you guys. We call them our biotech screenmatic. Screenmatic meaning there's actual screen in here that's going to, there's a lot of going on there. Just don't, don't be uh, scared by it. So, ID with our biotechs. They have, you know, either you regular your intakes for your water or they're meant to actually bolt on our UVs. We have a Bitron or a Bitron um, UVs. They are meant to be bolt on first. So the incoming water from your Aqua Max pump is gonna flow in through the UV or just through your filter as well. And coming in, there's a flow diverter. Again, blue. Water's gonna come out and hit the screen. What's gonna happen there is you're gonna get all your leaves, your algae, any particulate is gonna be caught there first. And the sensor is smart enough to know you'll adjust that for wherever the water is hitting on the screen. Whenever that sensor senses that that screen is getting too filth, too dirty, it'll automatically spin itself. What will happen is it'll be caught in this little blue collection plate there, and it's never going to get you know overflow or you know get choked out. So every depends on your maintenance two you know, two weeks a month you'll go ahead and dump that out. But you'll notice it's going to pick up a lot of you know the stuff that. Um, the pumps are throwing in. It's good. And then underneath, there is a huge raceway of sponges. Different courses of sponges. Anywhere from blue, purple, orange. Again, color is the courses. So some are going to let more particular through. Some are going to be a little tighter pound, a little tighter wound for polishing. Um, again, you'll notice when your output is starting to diminish and you're getting less water coming out, that means time for cleaning. The time it does come for cleaning, this is your handle. And this will actually attach to the sponges. And the same thing, you'll just pop these a couple, compress them, similar to the, the pressure filters. You'll make a really disgusting slurry, and then you open up the drain, blow that stuff right out. And depends on what size. Um, this is the 18,000, there are 10 or 8 sponges in here. I know on like the 38,000 there's like 16 sponges in there. So, um, again, it all depends on the size and the specs. But, and then you drop that back down and ready to roll. One improvement that they did make, which surprised me took so long, these little blue tabs here. They forgot those, because when the gust of wind come by, there goes the cap. So, again, blue cap, blue little tabs for action. So, super, super easy. But that is like if you've got heavy, heavy koi um, or massive, massive bodies of water, they have to 30,000 gallons. So, you can either run one or multiple of those. And it seems like one over, you can see that, that collection cup there, that guy with the blue handle there. That's all the stuff that's going to be pulling out of there. It's basically fully automated. And you really plug this in, you know, get it built, bolt it on, and plug it in, and sit back and enjoy. We want you to enjoy your, your water features. Same goes for our indoor plugs. So we want you to actually enjoy what's going on. We don't want to have your hands in there you know, every day. Sit back and relax. You've spent a lot of money on these things. You want to actually you know, uh, experience the fruits of your labor. Now, these are some of the uh, UVs that bolt onto the BioSmart and the BioTechs, or Vitrons. Um, they can be one standalone, so if you have a water feature or a pond that's just, you know, a little green or having some issues, you can just run a pump to this and back into that feature. Or if you do have one of our flow-through filters, they're meant to be bolted on, and then it's a one standalone unit. Like that. And our 
bitrons, therefore a larger biotex. Um, the cool about the bitrons, they have a self-cleaning port sleeve. So when you plug it in, there's a little screen to show that the bulb's actually running. It's like a little blue light, you'll see. But it pulses. It's like on off. It looks like it's going on off, on off, on off. Like, oh, something's wrong with this. But what's actually happening, there's a plastic scrubber in there that's actually constantly scrubbing the port sleeve. So you have to go in there, like on some of the aquarium UVs or some other pot UVs. After six months or a year, you have to pull that quartz sleeve out and look at it. It's just gross. You have to actually clean it off so you get the proper exposure time and the actual light penetration. So the Vitron has that little kind of scrubber that's always going. So even if you let that thing run for like five years, it's going to come out crystal clear because that scrubber is constantly cleaning that little quartz sleeve and making sure you're actually it's working, being efficient. Uh, we do have, if you have, let's say, a lake or a very large pond. You have floating fountains. They are from a quarter horse to a half horse. Um, just again for movement, let's say they're too big to you know throw on like six of these or whatever, you just want movement. Um, that does actually help. It's not just for theatrics. By having movement in a large body of water does actually have some beneficial purposes. Um, you're not, you're gonna kind of it's going to help with just getting aeration in there. Aeration is going to help with breakdown of the nutrients. And then two, especially on our floating fountains, being so lasa, it has that grounding plate. So you throw that in, you know, an acre pond, that whole body water is not protected. So if somebody has like an electric weed whacker and it goes in there, you're protected. So um, it's just another little added feature, but we do sell a ton of these. I mean, it's just um, a couple of little mooring lines. You literally can tie it off, frisbee that thing in there, Plug it in and go. Got LED lights with an automatic dust and dawn timer, a dust and dawn sensor, so the lights can kick on. It does get dark. You don't have to worry about trying to pull down that. And then our pond bags. Have you guys really worked on any of those yet, or really tried any of our pond bags? No. It's actually remember when I first came on three years ago. I never knew there was such a market for pond bags. You think, okay, let's grab a shop vac and just go in there. Um, a new Honda Vac 5. This is a contractor grade, throw in the back of your trunk, service call type of unit. Um, some other manufacturers will sell, you know, let's say, some other manufacturers try to sell like, you know, a fall cleaning or a spring type of unit. They'll drain the sucker, power wash it out. And then basically get you all the way. Our, our philosophy is just keep that water in there. Bacteria has been moving. It's a proper, happy ecosystem. Why disrupt it? So if you do have a great situation where you're getting a lot of I don't know, particular, let's say from leaves or grass clippings or whatever, and you want to like touch up your, your water feature, these are meant for that. They have different nozzles for the front. If you have like string algae, if you have a string algae attachment, that actually could break those suckers loose, or cut them off, get them out. Um, so this is a contractor grade unit that's meant to be abused. Um, but they've changed on this one particularly versus like the Pound of Act 4 or 3. This works on a 15 amp breaker. So most houses on the outside have a 15 amp. Some of our other units kind of almost need like a 20 amp, which are not usually standard for residential use, at least on the outside, external houses. Um, it's a little bit more efficient. Not going to be snapping breakers or you know popping or tripping breakers to run this thing. So what's neat about it is you have your suction going constant, and it also has a constant discharge. So whatever you're sucking in, it's going out the back. It comes with a 30 foot hose. So again, you can either water your plants or your neighbor's yard, and um, it's just for you know, for touching up. If you have a dead fish that's stuck in there or something rotting, you can get in there. Um, it's it's just a very nice you know, being you know, let's say for service work. Do, do a lot of that type of work. Easy pick pliers. This is for, let's say, grabbing a pump, grabbing a dead fish, grabbing a twig. Um, fully extension handle, it's all aluminum. Um, I mean, this is a pretty, it looks pretty, you know, it's pretty stout though. I mean, it can hold, you know, let's say you have an Aquamax pump or one of the waterfall pumps stuck in the bottom. It's long enough to get in there and grab it, it's strong enough to get in there and actually lift it out and get it out of it too. So, um, we've seen a lot of people, like landscapers, with their tractors or like their mowers. I have one of these on the side too for picking up trash. You know, or people have been using them for fruit. 
the light bulbs. So there's a lot of different applications. It's not just specifically for hot and hot. And then we have an easy pick, that's right, the flexi pick. This one's kind of neat too. It doesn't extend, but the head articulates. This is meant to cut off, you have like lilies or water, uh, aquatic plants. So it's not always just straight. It actually articulates for whatever angle you want. But there's a grab on there too. So whatever you cut, it's going to grab. So you're not going to cut it. It's going to float away. You got to oh, chase after it. It's going to cut it, hold on it, to pull it out. Um, especially in Florida, we talk about people who want to actually pick fruit, cut their mangoes, cut their apples, and then they don't have to worry about it falling and getting damaged. We'll trump just about everything. Color Tranix. It is a basically a ball cat, which you guys are probably familiar with, but it's kind of hopped up for the water garden side. Um, very, very large flange. So you can perforate it through your liner or if you have a pre-blown you know, uh, vessel. Um, it does come with different adapters and holes bars on the end. But the, the cool feature about it is there is a rubber gasket. You'll see it just below the unit itself. It's a cord chase. So if you want to get cords out of the water, out of your, your unit, versus like trying to run it over the side, or trying to make it, you know, trying to hide it. What you do is you run your cord through that little rubber grommet then you put it into the bulkhead itself, and then it comes a little Allen key. You start turning those, and it'll squish the rubber grommet and make that watertight seal. So you can pass cords underwater, which is more for aesthetics. You won't be able to see anything versus having a ton of cords running over on top of your features. All right, well, we went over the water garden slash pot side. Now we're going to get into our indoor aquatic side. Um, last year, the company decided to come out with indoor aquatics products to get into this category. Um, yes, yep. this category um, has been well established for many years. Um, we thought that we could do something a little bit different than what's out there currently. Again, similar aspects to our water garden side. You see the color palette, gray, blacks, blue. Blue is action. No, nope, it's not blue, leave it alone. Again, like it's a huge benefit for, benefit for stores, end users, whatever, because it alleviates any potential issues. And you gotta stress that. If it's blue, okay, that means there's some interaction. If it's not blue, please don't touch it. Call us, call you, call whoever. Um, so this takes, takes, takes care of any guesswork. Um, we're gonna start this kind of into our smaller internal style filter. We have a biocompact, we call it 25 or 50. You might recognize this filter and this filter. Reason being, is uh, we make them for zoom in. You've seen this before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we actually manufacture them for zoom in. Uh, so that's why you might like, hey, I recognize that. Or why you guys comment off of them? No, we make them for them. So, um, How do you make those? Zoom in. Yeah. Yeah. These are great for smaller little nano style tanks where you yeah. want a little bit of filtration and a, lot of fluid, a little bit of flow. Uh, for like your little planted tanks or you have a beta fish. Very small, compact, easy enough to suction cup in the back corner, hide them, whatever. Um, just very good little basic internal filters. I'm not going to get too much into them because uh, I think there's a, there's a better one in this place. Our bio pluses. I get excited about these. <laughs> I should. You know, being in the industry for 15 years, I've seen a lot of things come and go. And honestly, when the company came out, I'm like, oh, we're getting into cash filters and whatever. I'm like, why? You know, we're 10 years too late. You know, what can you really do that's going to be different? And, and uh, I'll be honest, I was kind of hesitant. But then getting in, ripping these things apart, getting to know them, I'm like, you know what? These can actually make a decent run. And I actually like these little the Bio Pluses a lot. Reason being, um, you'll know a lot of our heater, a lot of our filters come in a non-heated and a heated version. We call it our thermal version. Reason being is we can actually incorporate our heaters into our filters. This day and age, a lot of aquascaping going on. They're trying to get the tanks as clean as possible to make their display tanks pop. They don't want them seeing equipment. But we can alleviate the heater being seen in the aquarium by popping it into our filters, great. So this is really taken off in the planted tank, the aquascaping community because like I said, they like that clean, you don't want to see anything. You want to actually focus on the plants or the inhabitants in there, not equipment. Um, Bio Plus is great. Um, three different sizes, the reason being, one thing really different is the filters here. There's going to be one, two, or three, depending on the size. Our heater that can come with it is appropriate size, whether it's you know 
this little stubby guy up to like 150 watts. Um, there are suction cups. Once you actually suction cup that into the back corner of the aquarium, we did find out too that you can actually put this on its bottom corner. So unless you had a, you know, like a turtle tank or something like that, this can be placed on the bottom or shooting outwards. So you have a little bit of water. As long as it's fully submerged and can operate, it can be actually popped in that way too. But ideally it's going to be upright facing out. Yeah, they, they do advertise that, you know, they are fully submersible, but there is a water level line on there anyways, but you're not going to, you're not going to hurt. But, um, so, so what's is it talking about? Yeah. What's that? It's another code to do that, too. Yeah. I'll talk about the heaters, too, how the testing going to get done on these things. But, uh, so once this is suction cup in place, the main base will stay put, and it does come time for maintenance. This is held on with little magnets. So... That stays, been, that stays put, and it does come time for maintenance. Again, blue action. That comes off. There's a sponge in there. You can't pop this out for like filter floss or like you know, zeolite or some type of other chemical media. You're done. Pop that back in place. Find your unit. Magnet. Boom. Done. The magnets are safe. They're not going to rust. Um, adjustable diverter on the top for a spray bar or a solid flow. The, actually, the spray bar on top is pretty cool, so it actually gives you some surface agitation, nice and gentle. So, um, yeah, like a lot of the shrimp guys love them because again, it's very gentle. And if the, <coughs> the little baffles are small, if it's suck up any of the little, the little shrimp because they're getting kind of expensive this day and age. So, great little unit, very inexpensive, very efficient. I mean, the wattage on this thing, minus the heater is going to cost you some wattage, but the actual operation of the filter itself, I mean, this thing's like six, it's four watts. So. Can't beat that. Filter smart. Um, again, not completely no point. Um, again, it looks great. So it's a zoom in filter, but it's our shell. What's different is the heated version. Again, a non-heated or a thermal version. Um, very good entry level to get into the yes. Multiple size from a 60 liter, and now to a 300. Um, because the, again, the liters is. Down, so it's the new fancy way of calling things at this day and age. Um, Rule this basic chemical filtration, uh, chemical filtration, and the heated part of it. That's it. Um, very easy to get into, very easy to operate, very good to, to get in, to get into it, to get into a answer filter. Um, really, I mean, it's very simple, basic, no um, bells and whistles. What I am going to talk about a lot is our biomass. This is really what got people excited about velocity in the indoor aquatics market. Um, again, when it first came out, like it's a freaking cancer filter. Well, how much? How much different can it be? What's cool about it? The biggest selling point, especially for selling service maintenance, is sorry, is this pre-filter model. This is what's going to catch anywhere from 80 to 90 percent of your particulate, and this is what you're going to be cleaning on a weekly, two weeks, three week, you know, three week basis. You're not going to have to actually rip this whole thing apart every month. You're going to leave this alone. Let it do its job. This is what you're going to get into. Again, you'll notice that let's say the output or the flow is going to start degrading a little bit, and then at that time it's going to signal like, okay, I should probably check this out. There's a little sponge, depending on what size biomass you have comes with a correlating amount of sponges. They come preloaded with carbon impregnated sponges, um, but we do offer different coarsenesses. So there's like a 60 PPI sponge that's more for polishing. I rec I usually like to go that route. Um, I have to get in there a little bit more, but my water is mint, you know. Um, it clears it up a lot quicker, but I need to do a little bit more maintenance. So once a week, I'll get in there, you know, really squeeze them out, put it back in. Put the back on. I'll recommend too. Do not throw the sleeve away. For some reason, people thought this is something like a shipping vessel or something that needed to come off and throw that away. Keep this, please. So, find the quarter that you have. There it is. And these are key. So, when the time does come to do your maintenance, you can't open this side without doing this one first. This one will shut off your flow. You're not going to get back siphoning and flood your saw or your flood your. your, your uh, stand and whatnot yeah so these are the different um, sponges this is the 45 
this is the 30, so even, even more coarse. But there's a 60 PPI that honestly it is like very tightly packed that is your polishing. Uh, something I personally like to use, but again, if you're selling you know, on a service contract or for your own personal use, you know, the 45 is your everyday all around good, you know, uh, good sponge. So again, you can't open this up without turning the first key which shuts your flow off. Then you can open this up and fold this up. And then this is your priming function. So when you do put it back on, simple couple pumps, pull the draw back down, plug it back in. This is the heated version, so this comes preloaded with the heater. All of our BioMaster, all of our fil uh, other camps filters, whatever, they do come, if you don't buy the heated version, they do come with the adapter built in. So you can add the heater at a later date. It has to be our heater. It has to be. And um, yeah, so I mean, this, it's again, a very bulletproof, easy filter. Um, what I do get a lot of comments on, if you're trying to compare apples to apples, like to say like a Fluval or e or something like that, apples to apples on gallons per hour. Our gallons per hour are a little bit slower. We have a different mindset on, you know, this day and age, everyone wants, I want, you know, 700 gallons an hour ripping through my tank, and you know, you're, you're pushing 400. What's the difference? Well, our philosophy is we need to slow it down, let the filter do its job. We want that contact time, we want that exposure time in the filters. If you want to have a rip roaring, throw a couple power heads in there. But let the filter inspect out to have the appropriate flow at that gallons per hour at that size aquarium. So if you really want more, throw a couple, throw a couple of these on there, not just you know one. But um, we're always going, I shouldn't say lose, but we're going to get hit because of our gallons per hour compared to other manufacturers for the, for the same size aquarium. So let's say you know, a 70 gallon aquarium, we'll put this guy on there. This is great, I can't remember off the top of my head what the gallons per hour, but the competitor might be, you know, maybe 100, 200 gallons an hour more. But that's fine. We're getting better filtration because we're slowing it down. We're having that contact time, the exposure time for the water to do, you know, what it needs to do and our filter to do what it needs to do. Versus if you have it going through too fast, why bother? It's just going to, you know, just throw a power head in there. So that's, that's the one knock that we'll have. It's just a different philosophy. You know, in the States, we want power. We want, you know, just, you know. It's 250. Okay. So. Same with model. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, that's, that's, if you're going to get questions on that, that's the answer. We want, inspect out, we want exploring that. We want the building to do its job. So the water coming back in that aquarium is pristine. If you want flow, go somewhere else. <laughs> you're still going to get adequate flow, not like it's just spitting out. You're getting some decent, you know, movement, but um, you're going to get the apples apples comparison and we're going we're gonna to be a little bit less than that, but we can justify it by the actual amount of filtration in these units. Well, as I said, the big key fill-up set points are the heaters built in and that pre-filter module. I mean, this cuts down your maintenance to five minutes, if that. So, you're not in there ripping the whole thing apart. You can get in there, you know, let's say at, um, every three months. And even you can take sponges out, you can take out whatever and throw, you know, like CCAM matrix in there or any type of, some people just load this with bio and let the pre-filter do all the, the, uh, the cleanup. That's fine. So they are kind of customizable. So, yeah, super easy. It does come with all the adapters for um, the inlet for the suction on the discharge is a regular flared nozzle or we do offer a spray bar that comes with it too. So there's applications, however you want to do it. Just a really all-around great, great filter. Silent, um, really, really good in warranty. Um, they do have rubber feet that will come on the bottom of this thing to help with vibration. So again, they are silent. So I'm going to carry it with full one. Oh yeah, yeah. They remanufactured the, the handle. I mean, this thing is it's, it's heavy. It's stout. Yeah. So again, you know, Alasa. It's made. You know, Alasa is a German company. Everything's got to go through. German testing, German engineering, again, German engine, uh, manufacturing. So these are, by the time we get them here, they are run through the gauntlet. They've gone through every possible scenario that would have a fail, so something would cause a catch shot to fail. Um, this, by the time they're, they're here, they have been, you know, we get the final, the final, the final, final polished product. So, yeah. so they're actually manufactured in Germany, right? Yeah, well, everything. You're seeing here from the water garden side. I mean, I think it's 
here. Yeah, so these are our biohelix material. This okay. is, yeah. It's meant to be fully submerged and the netting. Keep them in the netting. I see people like, oh, cool. And they open them up and pff, all over the place. Leave them alone. And then we've got a different, you know, courses pads. Again, you can take these out. What I've done, um, again, it's not right or wrong. It's just my personal preference. Um, the final sponge on here, it's pretty tightly, pop, tightly wound. It's more of a polishing pad. I've taken this off and put like filter floss in there and just jam it. But I know I'm going to get in there more often to take care of it. So, um, yeah, like you, if you stock wise, you shouldn't have to go in there for quite some time. So, but yeah, otherwise, there is the capability of doing whatever you want in there. You can, you know, so some people are anti sponges, they'll take them all out, they'll throw. They'll leave our, our biohelix material, they'll throw a type of, you know, let's say rocks or like those uh, lava rocks or they'll do some of the sea chem material, stuff like that. Super X, so yeah, yeah. high surface area, form one media there. Mm -hmm. So get, and again on the application where like the planted aquascaping people, they want this full bio. And then they'll use that pre-filter as their main for mechanical eyes. So, boom, 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 boom. Our heaters took forever to get in the States, but Reason being is we had to pass the new rigorous UL testing. Um, we can say we are the safest heater out there by today's UL standards. This thing had to pass drop tests. This thing had to literally stand out of water, plugged in, and not shatter or fry or kill somebody. Um, what this thing had to go through to get the new UL uh, approval is ridiculous. That's why it took like almost an extra year to get them here in the States. But for the price, and I was thinking about some important things where they said it's current, so they've done the, the standard right now because it's so new. For a lot of the ULs you see coming out of China, they're claiming that it's UL listed. They got that certification maybe seven, eight years ago, right? But it may not be up to, it's a little false. It may not be up to the same standards as a new one, right? Do they ever have to recertify? They probably do, but the question is who's going to go after them? I mean, yeah. nobody's going to go, it's just not a big enough industry. Right, so um, yeah, these are them, I and mean, they are they're heavy, and they were meant to be taken to taken abuse. They had to pass something like a six foot drop test over and over and over. So and it's, if you notice, like compared to something else out there, the quartz sleeve is thicker. The components are beefier, they're more stout. Except so they had to pass these crazy tests. So what you're getting is a you know, yeah, it's a, another glass heater, but this is a piece of art at, at this point now. Um, very, very accurate. They do come with a calibration tool. So if you do have a digital thermometer and you notice that like, it's showing you know, 80 degrees, but it's really like 81, you can actually recalibrate and dial it back in to match up with whatever digital thermometer you have to. Um, I'll pass them around. We just... No, I can try to have it. Zero to half a degree. Half a degree. So, pass them around. Kind of shut off. Keep it over So yes, they, they do have a control of like this little this is the brains behind it right there. For some reason, they do overheat, it'll trigger that, kick it off. And the entire time I've had them, in eight months now, I've had one 300 watt heater not turn off. Why, I don't know. But all the other close to a thousand I've got out there now, nothing. They have been bulletproof. So, and they're reasonably priced. I mean, they're, they're good everyday heaters. I mean, yeah, they're not attractive, but what heater is? But that's why I do very <laughs> many, you know, filter. Forget about it. So, and that's it. Again, blue, action, you can dial it in, and the rest of it, you can leave it alone. So. They can be sold separately as well. Correct, yeah. So if you already have a filter on a tank, they come with all the suction cups to put it on the tank. Um, again, too, if you buy one of our canisters that's not heated, they can go back into one of our filters because they do come with the little bungs for them. What's the warranty on the heater? Straight three. Yeah. No questions asked, three. It breaks somehow. I don't want to know what you did to it. So is it? It's a, it's a, I've been really cracking them on the desks to show people. And then our OptiMax pump. It's anywhere from 85 gallons an hour to 1,420 gallons. Um, this is our little what is it, 285. Um, real basic. Um, you know, can be anywhere from our 560 gallons an hour and up. Can be installed wet or dry. Otherwise, those smaller ones have to be obviously submerged. Such cups for the feet, flow control, um, grounded, three-year warranty, fresh or salt. 
very just easy everyday pumps and they work well. Uh, Biorm is a basically a, a European or you know, uh, UK company that started in 1999, the father and son team. They basically look at the old school fishbowl that we all kind of either started with or seen and like, okay, this is you know, what we all kind of started with. What can we do to make it more functional, more aesthetically pleasing? How can we make these things look like works of art like you see up there? Um, Biorb's mantra has always been more style, less fuss. Um, again, kind of fits together with where everything else is going on here. We want you to enjoy your aquarium, your pond, your filter, whatever. We want you to end these things every damn day uh, working on them. So we get all these little bullets up here first. Okay. Biorb, um, some of the features and benefits is they are all acrylic. Every single one of our aquariums, no matter what size, no matter what style, shape, whatever color, they're all acrylic. If you don't know the benefits of acrylic, it's stronger, it's lighter, it's clearer than glass. Um, we do have a video of one of our manufacturing guys literally dribbling one of our spheres like a basketball. <laughs> and it's bang, 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 and it's not, you know, it's just coming right back at him. So good for people, children, dogs, whatever, things that you can chuck a baseball at or whatever, things you don't worry about shattering. Um, but also with the weight, it's lighter, it gives you the opportunity to put these things in different areas. So you can put them on your coffee table, your desk, your countertop, wherever. Um, you don't always have to have a very stout stand to hold these things. Yes, the water, you know, is just heavy, but the unit itself, I mean, this thing weighs like five pounds. Um, but it's going to weigh like 40 pounds once it's full of water. Um, all of our buyers come with LED lighting. We know the benefits of LEDs. They last longer, they're cooler, less energy to actually operate. Um, another benefit to our bio orbs are um, the filter itself. It's a proprietary filter. It looks like a little hockey puck. While they are operated is through a little air pump. It's an air-driven filter. And it's kind of like a hot-rodded under gravel filter. We have our base or media, that's our gravel, that's our, where our biological bacteria is housed. And I can actually walk out. Yeah, perfect. So that's the water path. So the bubble is actually you know, drawing the water up through the filter. We're using the curvature and the, uh, the curvature and shape and I guess really gravity in our favor. We're letting the water and the particulate and stuff fall to us by putting the filter at the bottom. Again, kind of in line with, with our, fill, our pond stuff, letting, putting the equipment at the bottom where it's all gonna come towards. Um, it's gotta go through the, the ceramic media or biological bacteria, breaks that down, goes into our filter, and the filter itself, it's really a little hot rod filter. There is a sponge for the particulate, there's carbon, there's an ammonia remover, and then we added aluminum oxide, a phosphate remover. So the water in there is going to be actually pretty darn clear. So for a nice little type of aquarium. Um, and that one filter fits every single one of our aquariums. You don't have to worry about buying, oh, I've got a four gallon buyer, or I have a 16 gallon buyer, it's that same filter. That same cartridge, you don't have to have stock, you know, 20 different filter cartridges, just that one. And in that, in that filter pack, we call it a service kit, it comes with a bacterial booster, a water conditioner, and acrylic safe cleaning pad. So you do your maintenance, here's your cartridge, and it's here, you're done in, again, 10 minutes. So again, we want you enjoying these things versus cleaning them all the time. Uh, yeah, there's the, the filter itself, super easy. And then once you're done with the filter, chuck it out. And actually the bases of them are recyclable if you want to actually use that. So um, yeah, it's super easy. A quarter twist where that bubbles are coming up, you grab that tube, quarter twist, the whole something comes right out. And then hook the bottom base, put the new cartridge back in, the quarter, quarter twist to put it back on. Super easy. All right. Next, yeah, so I mean, you don't have to, we, it's just part of the kit. So, um, we obviously recommend filtered water if you can buy it at the store, otherwise, we have the water condition in there because some people are going to use tap water no matter what. So, um, here are our bio aquarium types. Our claim to fame was our classic, which are, that's the one sphere up there. Um, that's what came out in 1999, and it's still going to the state. Um, it's still one of our best selling year after year after year. And then we do have a Barb Halo, looks kind of like a spaceship. 
Um, what they, the difference between the Halo and the Classic is it has a larger lid, which hides the water line. So some people don't want to see that, you go towards the Halo. We do have a Flow, Bio Life, and a Bio Tube. And our newest is our Bio Cube. I see a lot of cube aquariums out there now. Um, it's just our way into that little category. Um, again, all same lighting, all same filtration, um, all same components, just really what color, what size, what shape you want. So yeah, speaking of decorations, I mean, we have you know, hundreds and hundreds of different different style plants. I think it's going crazy. Okay. <laughs> um, for the store use, or for a store application, we have decor sets. So yes, we have a lot of different awesome, awesome plants, very, you know, different, um, great aesthetically looking plants. We have decor sets. And what they are, it's basically all the decorations you need for that size. We have them for four gallons, we have them for eight gallons. So let's say the customer comes in, oh, I like this four gallon bio orb. I don't know, I'm too, you know, kind of picking out plants can be kind of inundative, like, or kind of, I don't know what I want to look at. We have these decor sets where literally it's everything you need in that, in that kit to make it look like that. So you get the tank, you get the decor set, and they're done, you know. So otherwise, we do have the loose plants themselves. So if you want to decorate you know, another manufacturer's tank or our tank, um, yeah, you can go that route too. I mean, they are pretty nice plants. You can do most of them are two packs, and in the two packs, they're different. They're not two of the same one. And then we have our own little patented, little weighted ball, looks like a golf ball. Great for tanks with cichlids, where you know cichlids are kind of constantly rooting up you know, your other you know, plants or whatever. You chuck that ball in there, Right down to the bottom, and it looks kind of you know inconspicuous, but like the gravel saying, it does match our gravel, so it kind of blends in really well. So you can kind of see these cool little feather in our cap. The name is Samuel Baker. He's based in the UK. He's an artist slash store owner, mainly heavily on the artist side. Um, he's been with us for as long as I can remember, and all the sculptures that we have. Now those are the sculptures are meant to either go over a bubble tube and mask it or can be set in other aquariums too. Heavy duty, I mean they're made of ceramic and so really the idea being a Samuel Baker, he builds the molds by hand. He's very into nature, he's always traveling, he's scuba diving, hiking, whatever. So he sees things in nature and will incorporate that into our tanks. And so all the sculptures that we have are modeled from him. So he'll come up with crazy prototypes and we're like, that is unbelievable, yeah, that's great, yes. What the hell are you thinking on that? I don't want that at all. So he's got a lot of cool ideas, but we have to think of it as, okay, is it functional, will it actually sell? But he's an artist in his own his own world, but he is unbelievable. So all of our sculptures are based off of his thoughts, his inspirations, literally built by his hand. So he'll make the mold and we replicate that um, past there. So we've got some pretty, pretty intricate detailed sculptures that again are meant to either go over the bubble tube like that or some people like to see the bubbles and they'll put the sculptures around it so it's up to you or if you have another aquarium you just want some large piece for decoration put them in there as well too um, all ceramic um, I mean heavily heavily coated so that they're like bleach safe and all I don't I'm not recommending that but a personal use for the plants decorations you know if you want to clean them really quick one to one of bleach and water, and then you're done. Um, they can stand up to salt if need be, so very, very stout. And we talked about our plants. Our plants, what did I do there? Oh, <laughs> it's, uh, um, again, very, very different than what's out there, you know, versus like the other manufacturers. Um, ours is a little bit more realistic, but yet not gaudy. Yes, they're colorful, but they're they're aesthetically pleasing. And again, most of them are sold in two packs, and in those two packs, you're getting two different colors, not two purple. You're getting two, one purple, one kind of pinkish or whatever, so. What's a recipe card? Recipe cards are something for the store use, similar to like our decor sets. They're like index cards. So we have like 40 different recipe cards. So they're stacked up, and you usually put them by you know, your planet section, and they're just basically Hero images like this. Exactly. So someone could say, you know, I got that tank. I love how that looks. How do I make that? They turn that card over. You need A, B, C, D. 
what to buy. Yeah. Just getting into this category. Um, what this is, it's a fully automated terrarium. So good for orchids, ferns, tropical plants. Again, it's that wow factor. Very modern. Again, you don't want to be in there dealing with it. It takes care of the lighting. It has an automatic fogger or missing unit. So it senses the humidity every second. And when it drops below, there's three settings. They go from 60 to 75%. You'll notice that the unit starts fogging. Oh my God, what's going on? And it's raising that relative humidity to your set point, which is ideal for your tropical plants, your frogs, whatever else you want out there. Um, and the lighting is on an automatic light cycle, so it goes from dark all the way up to 100%, and then it'll dark itself back up again. It's an automatic fan in there, so it's constantly circulating air, so it gets stagnant. Um, the bottom has a self-wicking capillary mat, so it's self-watering. Um, it's just a cool, awesome so way to do it. Do it, fix it exactly the way you said yep. it, and it's it, you don't touch it again. And you walk away. And it's smart, smart enough wow. to know on the top of the reservoir that has the misting or fogging unit, when it gets low or out of water, it flashes. Not like a crazy schizo light, but it's like it'll pulse once every couple of seconds, every couple of minutes. Like, hey, I'm low in water. You top it off, you're back in business. Only time you really have to go in there is if your plants start growing too hard, you snip them or change them out, whatever you want to do. So um, it's a 16 gallon, so it's about 20 inches in diameter. It's white or gray. Uh, again, low voltage, it runs on a 20, uh, 12 volt power source. Well, another thing, yeah, our, our biros, all 12 volts. So don't worry about running crazy high electrical bills or zapping people. You can drop the light in the tank, you're not gonna go nuts, so. Even for like shows or trade shows, I'll tell you what, like Home Depot and Lowe's, they have a decent little indoor tropical section for, you know, little miniature orchids, ferns, and like that too, so. You can get the, 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 the buyer of air, and you can probably plant them the thing for 50 bucks so this is a great focal point you know someone that you want to have a, a wow factor in a dark corner once you got a plug somewhere you can plug it in so it's just a cool little automated terrarium great for dark frogs we don't advertise it as that because it there's all those Does it have going easy in. access to put food in there? yeah the whole lid opens right up the top of it you have about that much access to the top <laughs> Yeah, yeah, great, great unit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's great for you know. I said they have uh, in the UK in our headquarters for Reef One. They have a, a new tarantula named Maggie in there. I mean, that thing's that big. It scares the hell out of me. But mm -hmm. um, it's fine. Right. But you usually see you know the tree frogs, the red tree frogs, or the little poison the dark frogs, the poisonous one. Yeah, those guys do really well in their fire belly toads, things like that. So yeah, they're great little units. So. Is there any way to heat it? You could. I'll tell you what. Um, I haven't seen an instance yet where because acrylic is a very good insulator, so it holds heat well. With the humidity and the lights, even though yeah, LEDs are cool, they do kick off a little bit of heat. It does stay. It's not hot, but it's not cold. So unless you really require something that needs 90s or whatever. You probably could put on like a little heating mat, hopefully get up in there, but for the most part it stays relatively like 80, 85 degrees in there. Like think of like, you know, it, it's it's a it's a jungle. It, it's literally a tropical environment, jungle. That high humidity and the light skin kicking off a little bit of heat, it, it's very, very tempted. Very, very, you know, it's nice. So that was it, go ahead. Is it a mister or an atom? It is a ultrasonic emitter, so think of a, a um, humidifier. You know, like those little ones that like will bubble okay. and then you kick out that fog, that smoke. And then on that, do you recommend using RO water instead of tap water? Because of the yes. Stuff that yeah. Cool. So it does come with. And we call it. Uh, we have a name for it. We do sell the water. Um, it's not. It does have extra electrolytes in it to make the. Mr. or the ultrasonic mister work a little bit better, but straight up, you know, never any tap water, this RO or drinking water is fine. And sometimes you do get the calcium buildup again, some vinegar will take care of that. But usually on, on average, when you fill that top reservoir up, you get anywhere from seven to 10 days out of it. So if 
before it starts flashing at you like, hey, I'm thirsty again. So, I think that's all for bio. Good. Anything else? Please. <laughs> Thank you. Hey guys, thanks again for coming by and seeing this video. Next week, I'll be doing, uh, I'm probably going to be doing a trim on one of my tanks. I'm either going to do the 16 gallon. Uh, I've also got some work I need to do on the steampunk tank upstairs. So we'll be back into regular projects and regular videos next week, and I'll see you then. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.